So the February 16th episode is where you told us the story earlier. Randy was supposed to get this hard way blood yeah. uh, and punching you over the eyebrow. Um, <laughs> of course, we know it doesn't really go expe- as exactly as we would have expected. Uh, Orton it still looks Foley good. It looks with, really good. Okay, what's is it Meltzer? Orton hit Foley with seven hard shots in the temple, and he legit injured his hand in doing so. <laughs> Foley had major swelling near his temple from all the punches that the cameras on Raw this week were ordered to avoid <laughs> to concentrate on shooting the blackened and bloodshot eye. The eye didn't get discolored after the beating, but as Foley likely wanted it to, since this angle had been the, his creation from the start, Many people in the company were skeptical of the first part of it when he walked out on Orton, disappeared for six weeks, and was constantly branded a coward. Uh, But the company has finally agreed to it. So (laughs) the next week, which you sort of alluded to, Foley used no makeup on the 23rd Raw skit with Jim Ross. He actually did an interview with Coach in midweek. Mm -hmm. Vince hated it and said he wouldn't let it air. So he'd do the second interview with... uh, with JR and and he says Foley is unique in that he doesn't want to use makeup for the angle. But nowadays when you can do it with makeup, it's just done so often. I often wonder whether risking eyesight problems to make it more legit when 70 to 95% of the audience will believe it was makeup anyway is worth it. In hindsight, is Meltzer on to something? Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, I have some problems, you know, with my right eye. You might see me occasionally blinking. You think it's from that? Yeah. I do. You can see in photos uh, sometimes that the uh, movement isn't the same. Uh, and Tara and um, Robert Fuller was my, you know, my hard, hard way guru, and he told me it was dangerous. And he said nothing more effective at creating realism, but it's dangerous. And in this case, you know, with Randy, it's not much difference, not much distance between the temple and the eyebrow, but he hit me seven times in a row in that temple. So it was another another one of these things, just like with the uh, the super fortified uh, hardcore title case that uh, Randy hit me with. You know, it was a worst case scenario. Like that eye is so swollen up and not a drop of blood, but it would play out. I have to think. Oh, I like to think that fans would know it was real. Like the uh, like you no, can, it felt real because it felt the spit real. felt real. Yeah. Everything about this felt real. And I think the highest form of flattery I got is that when I returned home, my son Mickey, so we're talking two thousand four, he would have been three, he said, Daddy, bad lady because to him being ugly was the heels in the Disney movies. The bad ladies were the ones that you know the 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 hag and in uh, Snow White, uh, you know the stepmother in Cinderella, and uh, the Urs- uh, Ursula and uh, the Mermaid. one yeah yeah and also Sleeping Beauty yeah. uh, the one that Angelina Jolie went on to play. So when he that was his way of describing how bad I looked, and we've got a couple great photos, you know of you know, me with the kids. And that was a shiner to end all shiners. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty significant. So in Atlanta, that Foley memory is right. Uh, you're finally saved. Show ended with Foley coming out. Evolution Sands Triple H, who had left to get the strippers ready, came out for their gangland beating. (laughs) Orton again challenged Foley to a singles match. Foley said he knew there was no such thing as a singles match, so he wanted a partner for a two-on-three. They screwed up a little here, since everyone in Atlanta knew Rock was coming, since he'd been advertised, and that's why everyone bought tickets. (laughs) Even though it was in USA Today, most viewers at home wouldn't have known it. So instead of a big pop when Foley announced his partner... Orton basically said, we all know who it is, Mr. Hollywood and Mr. Walking Tall. They did act like Rock wasn't there and told Foley to call him up. Foley left the ring and Rock ran in. So in hindsight... But he's leaving out the, the important thing about, all right, I'm going to call him right now. I'm going to call him right now. And bailing out of there, like almost power walking and then turning around going, instead of me calling him, boom, here, here it comes. So it was... Yeah, it was unfortunate that Rock had been advertised, but I don't think it hurt the pop. Uh, another one, I'll go on record, Road Warrior-esque. 
After the show, it's uh, Rock and Austin in the ring for 30 minutes, cracking jokes on the mic. This has to be fun. <laughs> Just with yeah, yeah, because because Steve was the uh, Steve was I don't know they're calling a GM then by then I think it was GM instead of commissioner, and Steve felt like he couldn't do what he did physically, but he still had the ability to entertain people. Yeah, and he would do those great things where he would say Lillian, you know, he get down on his a uh, one knee and like he was proposing to Lillian, he said, put his hand in her, her hand and he said, Lillian, would you get me a damn beer? Like there was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, and Rock and I had that history when we were the Rock and Sock Connection of being out there for 10 minutes. We didn't put in as much time as Steve did, but just entertaining people when the cameras, I guess in some respect, cameras are never really off, but when the USA cameras are off, and you're just doing it for the love of entertaining and because you want people to go home with smiles on their faces. Well, they had smiles the next day.